Now we are going to discuss representation of functions as power series. And an example we've already discussed is the example of the function 1 over 1 minus x. We can think of the 1 at the top as the first term of a geometric series and at the bottom 1 minus x can be sort of as 1 minus a common ratio. And so if you think of it that way, this is really just a sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n because this is a geometric series of common ratio x with um, first term 1, which is x to the 0. Of course, you have to assume that this series is convergent, in other words, that the um, common ratio is in absolute value less than 1. So this equality is valid only when x is between negative 1 and 1 strictly. And so this is an example of a power series representation of a function, in this case on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. So these power series representation are useful in part because if you think of what it says, it says that the function f of x is the sum of the series, which is really the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of partial sums. And here the sequence of partial sums, Sn, is just a polynomial of degree n in that case. And as n goes to infinity, uh, this goes to f of x. In other words, uh, you're approximating the function by a sequence of polynomials. And polynomials are very nice. Uh, in particular, computationally, they are very simple. Right? To evaluate a polynomial at a certain point, you just do um, additions and multiplications. Whereas, of course, for the function that you're approximating by this polynomial, it might be much more complicated. But you can approximate with whatever accuracy you want by taking these um, polynomials of higher and higher degree. So, based on this very simple example, um, the sum of a geometric series, we're going to see that we can use this uh, simple idea to find power series representation for other functions as well. So let's say we want to find power series representations and each time we're going to have to also find the interval on which the power series representation is valid for these five functions starting with 1 over 1 plus x. Well you see that what we have is if you have 1 over 1 minus x it's the sum of the geometric series of common ratio x and first term 1 here, if I have 1 over 1 plus x, all I need to do is write this as 1 over 1 minus something, which will be my, my common ratio. And specifically, I can write it as 1 over 1 minus negative x. And then I have, for absolute value of negative x less than 1, I have the sum of the geometric series of first term 1 and common ratio negative x. So the series from 0 to infinity of negative x to the n. Absolute value of negative x is of course the same as absolute value of x and the condition is that this absolute value is less than 1. And now negative x to the n, I can write that negative 1 to the n, x to the n. And therefore I get a power series where the nth coefficient is just negative 1 to the n. Power series centered at 0. And my power series representation for 1 over 1 plus x is valid uh, on the open interval negative 1 to 1. In the second case, we have 1 over 1 plus x squared. So again, um, you can think of that as 1 over 1 minus something, specifically 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. And then, um, applying what we have uh, in the red rectangle at the top, it's really just the sum of a geometric series of common ratio negative x squared and first term 1. So the sum from 0 to infinity of negative x squared to the n. And this is valid as long as the common ratio negative x squared is in absolute value less than 1. Of course, negative x squared to the n is really negative 1 to the n times x squared to the n. And x squared to the n is x to the 2n. And this condition here, um, of course, absolute value of negative x squared is the same as absolute value of x squared. And absolute value of x squared is less than 1 exactly when absolute value of x is less than 1. And so we get the sum of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n, and the equality with 1 over 1 plus x squared is valid on the open interval negative 1, 1, in other words, for absolute value of x less than 1. 
Now in the uh, third case, we don't have this 1 over 1 plus or minus something. However, if you look at what we have at the top, this 1 over 1 minus x, uh, what we have been using so far is this 1 at the bottom. And we wrote the bottom as 1 plus or minus, well, specifically minus something, and this something is your common ratio. So we don't have a 1 here, but it's not out to make it a 1, because we have a constant. So we're just going to factor out this constant at the bottom to obtain a 1. In other words, if I factor negative 5 at the bottom, I'm really factoring negative 1 fifth. And when I factor it out of this negative 5 at the bottom, I get 1. When I factor it out of x, I get negative x over 5. So I can rewrite 1 over x minus 5 as negative 1 fifth of 1 over 1 minus x over 5. And now I have something of the form 1 over 1 minus something. So this is first term 1, common ratio, x over 5. I get negative 1 fifth times a series from 0 to infinity of my common ratio x over 5 to the n. And that is valid as long as the common ratio in absolute value is less than 1. But of course, this condition, uh, for one thing, what we have as a general term, powers of the common ratio, can be rewritten as x to the n divided by 5 to the n. And this condition for convergence, absolute value of x over 5 is less than 1, is the same as absolute value of x is less than 5. And therefore, we get that 1 over x minus 5 is negative 1 fifth of the series from 0 to infinity of x to the n divided by 5 to the n. And this is valid for absolute value of x less than 5, in other words, on the open interval from negative 5 to 5. Now, finally, this is not important. You don't need to do that. But you could, if you want, uh, look at this 1 fifth and bring it in. When you have convergence, you can do that. And then you have uh, 1 over 5 to the n that you multiply by 1 over 5, so you get uh, 1 over 5 to the n plus 1. And so um, we obtain a power series representation for 1 over x minus 5 that is valid on the interval negative 5 to 5, the open interval. Now in number 5, we don't have just a 1 at the top, unlike for, uh, number 4, I'm sorry, unlike for the other three uh, examples. 1 plus x squared divided by 1 minus x squared. At the bottom, the 1 minus x squared can be interpreted as 1 minus common ratio, where the common ratio is x squared. But the top here, um, we have to interpret that as the first term. Well, one way to do that is simply to split the fraction and write that as 1 over 1 minus x squared plus x squared over 1 minus x squared. The first sum here, uh, is matches exactly what we have uh, in the red rectangle at the top. This is uh, something of the form 1 over 1 minus common ratio. So this is going to be the sum of the geometric series of common ratio x squared and first term 1. But this is really just also the sum of a geometric series of common ratio x squared, but first term x squared. So as long as our common ratio x squared is in absolute value less than 1, which of course means absolute value of x less than 1, we obtain for the first term the sum from 0 to infinity of x squared to the n, because then the first term is 1 and the common ratio is x squared. And then for the second term, we get the sum starting at 1 of x squared to the n, because then the first term is x squared. And uh, x squared to the n is of course x to the 2n, and now we would like to write that as just one sum. So here I have a sum that starts at 0, here a sum that starts at 1, and I would like to put them together. So what I'm going to do is look at the one that starts at 0, that has one more term, and take the extra term out. In other words, I'm going to write the first term, which is x squared to the 0, that's 1. I'm going to take that and then add the series starting at 1. So the first series can be replaced by 1 plus the series starting at 1 of x to the 2n. The second term is a series starting at 1 of x to the 2n. And the condition for convergence is that the absolute value of x squared is less than 1, which is the same as absolute value of x less than 1. And now, of course, I get just twice uh, my series. So I have 1 plus 2 series from 1 to infinity of x to the 2n, assuming that x is in the open interval negative 1, 1 
when you have this kind of sum of x to the 2n, what that means is uh, the coefficients here are 1 whenever the uh, power of x is even and 0 whenever the power of n, the power of x is odd. Now for the fifth uh, example, this function here, 7x minus 1 divided by 3x squared plus 2x minus 1, looks quite a bit more complicated than what we've seen so far. However, we have seen in example 3 that uh, if we have a constant over a uh, linear term, then there is uh, essentially a canon canonical way to use the sum of a geometric series to represent that as the sum of a power series. And we know that if we have uh, something like the function f of x, so it's a rational function, quotient of two polynomials, uh, we already have that the degree of the bottom is higher than the degree of the top, so we know how to split that into simpler terms, partial fractions, and that will be specifically of the kind of form we're discussing about number three, a constant over a linear factor because here um, the quadratic function at the bottom factors into two linear factors. So if we look at the uh, decomposition into partial fraction, the bottom is 0 when x is negative 1, that means x plus 1 is a factor, and if x plus 1 is a factor, to get 3x squared we need 3x, to get negative 1 we need minus 1, so the second factor is 3x minus 1, and therefore the form of the decomposition is a over x plus 1 plus b over 3x minus 1. In this case, to find a and b, we can use the n cover method. For instance, to find a, we can multiply everything by x plus 1 and set x equal negative 1. In that case, we find on the uh, right-hand side just a, and on the left-hand side the um, value of 7x minus 1 over 3x minus 1 at negative 1, and that's negative 8 over negative 4, that's 2, so a is 2. To find b, we multiply everything by 3x minus 1, set x equal 1 third. Then we get just b on the right hand side, on the left hand side, the value of 7x minus 1 over x plus 1 at 1 third. Well, that gives us um, 7 third minus 1, that's 4 third, divided by 1 third plus 1, that's 4 thirds, so 4 third over 4 third is 1, so b is 1. And therefore we obtain simply 2 over x plus 1 plus 1 over 3x minus 1. Now, I can write that as 2 times 1 over 1 plus x, and 1 over 1 plus x we know how to obtain the power series representation of that, minus 1 over 1 minus 3x. I wrote it that way so that in the um, second term in my sum, I have at the bottom 1 minus something. And now, this is my function f of x, and the first term, 1 over 1 plus x, is just the sum of the power series with first term 1 and common ratio negative x, and that rewrites as the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the n, as long as the common ratio negative x is in absolute value less than 1, so that means on the interval negative 1, 1 for x. On the other end, 1 over 1 minus 3x is the sum of the geometric series of first term 1 and common ratio 3x, so the sum from 0 to infinity of 3x to the n, and this is valid as long as the common ratio 3x is in absolute value less than 1, which gives us a condition that absolute value of x is less than 1 third. 3x to the n, on the other end, can be written as 3 to the n times x to the n. So now to write f of x as a sum of um, power series, we need to be able to use these representations for both. The first one is valid for x between negative 1 and 1, the second one only for x between negative 1 third and 1 third. So we will have to take this stronger condition that x is between negative 1 third and 1 third for both representations to be true at the same time. So under this condition, uh, we replace 1 over 1 plus x by its power series representation, so do we with 1 over 1 minus 3x, and this is valid, they are both valid for x between negative 1 third and 1 third. And finally, uh, I can 
pull all these together because here uh, the series are convergent so we can uh, put them together so we have 2 times negative 1 to the n minus 3 to the n and all that uh, is multiplied by x to the n In the next video, we are going to see that power series can be differentiated and integrated just like polynomials. And we will see how to use that to find power series representation for further functions.